Hello, this video corresponds to chapter 3 of this book and in this video I want to discuss shear stress. So whenever you you're analyzing shear stress you can create a virtual cut to a product and replace this virtual cut with the forces and moments that are happening in this virtual cut. So you can you can virtually cut everything and then as long as you put arrows along the side with it, the arrows that uh, of the forces and the moments that are transferred over there then it's a, a very nice and convenient way to analyze what's going on it, it, this image will make everything clearer for you uh, what is going on at the location of this virtual cut so we've got a, a beam with a, a force of a thousand newton that is perpendicular to the beam itself and I'm going to analyze it with help of SOLIDWORKS simulation and also with help of this stress element if you search on internet for stress element you'll find this image in a lot of places and it will help you to see which stress you should be analyzing so I'm, uh, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna create a new part uh, just a cylindrical part I'm using the simulation template that I've set up previously the reason for it is that I like the z-axis action, the z, z -axis to be pointing upwards so if you wanna see how I've set it up then you can search uh, for the first video that I, I put on a YouTube channel and there I, I show how to set it up like that so I'm gonna draw a round bar with a diameter of a diameter of 50 millimeters and then create an extrude of 200 millimeters and now I'm gonna create a fixture on the left side so I'm gonna create a new simulation study and create a, a fixture on the left side over here and then create a force force on the right side over here and then I'm using a selected direction so I can select the top plane to get a force of a thousand Newton in the reverse direction pointing downward like this and I'm ready to analyze this so I'll run this study And now I get my results already. I see the Von Mises stress, but I, I don't want to see that. In this case, I want to have a look at the shear stress. And now my stress element comes in handy. So when I switch over to here, I can see that I, I want to look at the shear stress, the shear stress that is uh, in the Z direction. That's what this Z stands for. And it's on a plane perpendicular to the X axis. So I can choose that in SOLIDWORKS, I'll choose tau xz and you can see here already it's in the z direction on the yz plane so it's on the yz plane which is perpendicular to the x axis so I'll choose that one and now I see here that the, the scale is not completely clear yet so first I'm gonna go over to Excel I've already calculated the situation I've got a thousand Newton and my surface area is pi times the radius to the squared so I use a diameter of 50 so the radius is 25 in millimeters so the total surface area is then roughly 2000 millimeters squared and when I divide the force by the area I get the shear stress of a half now here I see th that this uh, chart is not completely clear yet so I'll double click the graph area over here and change the minimum and the maximum to be here uh, roughly plus a half uh, and roughly minus a half like that and now I can see that the shear stress is roughly minus a half you can see it on the color here I can change it a little bit more to be minus 0 0.7 now you can see the color is already getting lighter so over here the, the shear stress is roughly half a newton per square millimeter as I just calculated in Excel as well so you can uh, you can see that's correct the reason that the maximum shear stress is in the middle and not on the top is that the top and the bottom give the part its strength they've got tensile and compressive stresses they give the part its strength but they can't take the shear stress because that's going to be taken in the middle of the part because the, the top and the bottom give the part its strength to actually take this shear stress on so now I've uh, 
I've done a calculation with help of this stress element. Sorry for the switching. With help of this stress element, I've seen quite conveniently which shear stress I should take. It's tau xz. And when you look further in SOLIDWORKS defining a stress plot, you can see over here when I choose the shear stresses that I can only plot three different shear stresses. The reason for that is when I switch back to this stress element that this shear stress xz has to be exactly similar, exactly the, the same value as tau zx because otherwise the element would sh start rotating. So this value and this value are always the same, this value and this value are always the same and this value and this value as well. So you've only got three different values and that's all the three different values that SOLIDWORKS can plot. So in that way it's quite convenient to select with help of this stress element which shear stress you actually want to see in your results. So I hope that was helpful for you to analyze shear stresses. Thanks for watching.